right, so continuing on. So now we have Steve Judd and Chris Clarkson. They are going to be talking about what's inside of your container image and dependency auditing. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris Clarkson, Security Engineering Lead at the Improbable Defense. And I'm Steve Judd. I'm the tech lead, and I work for a company called Jetstack. So we, to set the scene on uh, how we started out on this work, uh, we started looking at our supply chain, as many people have talked about today, uh, asking ourselves these four questions. What makes up our product? Uh, how much that product is from open source? How much is from inner source? How much is proprietary? Where those components come from? Do they come from GitLab? GitHub, Bitbucket, or somewhere else. What, where are these components used? So what environment are they used in? Is that development? Is it production? Is it test? And in, one, in what context? Is it an observability context? Is it the actual application running? And finally, who has control over those components? Can they retract it, republish it, edit it, uh, and, or add other, co other code to it? And what, uh, what risk does that open us up to as consumers of that component? Why is this important? Well, to start with, we're responding to the landscape, as some have mentioned today. There's been quite a few uh, open source, su uh, sorry, supply chain vulnerabilities and issues uh, appeared. So you've got log for shell and the solar, uh, the, the solar winds uh, issues. Uh, so we, we decided to take advantage of not being affected as much so that we could start working on the maturity as a team and an organization and factoring open source security and sec uh, supply chain security into our layered defensive model. Also, it allows us to get a better get a, get a better idea of what's in our product as we as we sell it and what kind of differences that are making the different use cases that our customers put it to. Next up, we we, we need to better serve our customers. Uh, we deal with uh, government agencies in varying uh, varying jurisdictions, so their legislative and compliance requirements often have an impact on how we deal with uh, how we deal with these these kind of issues. So, uh, our U.S. colleagues, for example. They're, they're subject to President Biden's executive order on cybersecurity, which means an improvement. Everyone that deals with the federal government has to have a better answer when it comes to supply chain management, vulnerability management, and the like. We also want to give our heroes a rest. So whenever there's an issue, you've got a small group of people with the knowledge, the experience, and the skill who know what to do and when to do it if an issue arises. We'd rather have those people on more complex and more fulfilling pieces of work. So we need to make this easier and more accessible to our broader response teams. And that, that means we've got to capture the information and make it available so anyone can get notified and respond accordingly. And finally, the, uh, the commercial engagement. So both in our current markets and our emerging markets, we've got, we're looking at how we deal with the increased number of uh, requests for SBOM and vulnerability management. And we, deal, we, have, we have to answer the fact that as an industry, we realize this is we can't go on as we have been. We've got to have a better story for this. What do we want to achieve from this? So first of all, a component, a component inventory. We need to know what we've got. We need to know what we're selling. And we need to know what is going downstream to our customers. So we need to know who created it, where it came from, and what version it's running at. So that allows us then to model against that what vulnerabilities we might be carrying, what we might introduce, but also what might be introduced downstream. We want, as I mentioned, we want to understand those vulnerabilities and track those and be proactive uh, in how we notify people downstream. And in addition to that, the licenses that we're working with. So uh, some of our customers have difficulty in complying with certain of the open source licenses. So we need to know which ones of those we carry with us so that we can work with the customers uh, and mitigate those kind of risks. And finally, the discoverability of these issues. We need a single pane of glass to allow people to see the issues that we might have the, the components that we've got, the licenses that we've got in a single pane of glass, rather than these individual siloed applications that, we're, that currently, uh, currently are deployed across our infrastructure. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. So in the last half of this talk, I'm going to go through how do we deliver on these requirements for improbable. So basically, I've split it into five uh, steps. And the aim is, by the end of this, you should be able to go away understanding how we can get to a way of uh, auditing our dependencies so that you could potentially apply it in your organization. So the first step is you need to be investing in using only a trusted Im image registry in your own organization. So essentially, as you can see from the diagram, rather than getting uh, your images direct from external uh, sources such as Docker Hub or Key, 
you're pulling them direct from your trusted registry. Um, so that gives you a couple of benefits. First of which is that you've now got much more control and insight into the images which you're using in your organization. Though clearly this means that all of your developers and CI pipelines and uh, Kubernetes clusters do need to pull from your trusted registry only. And the second benefit is that you're much less impacted if there were some problems with an upstream registry. For example, if the registry was unavailable for a period of time or if they deleted one of the images that you were dependent on. So step number two, once an image is added into your registry, you want to be generating uh, a software bill of materials. Um, so we've had quite a lot of really interesting talks today about what an SBOM is. So the parts that are of interest to us specifically are the list of dependencies that, are con that the, that the SBOM tells us are contained within that image. So to, in order to generate that SBOM, we're using a tool from Anchor called SIFT and we use the Cyclone DX format. So once we've got this SBOM generated, then we need to be uh, evaluating the licenses that that image, is, image contains and also the vulnerabilities that it contains. We use a tool from OWASP called Dependency Track and that helps us perform, manage and store these evaluations. Dependency track also contains a policy engine, and we are, apply, we are basically applying a security policy, and we use dependency track to tell us whether a, a newly added image uh, meets our policies or not. So armed with the information about whether the policy is compliant or not, if it's not, we can issue alert, an alert to the security team so that they can do further evaluation and possibly investigate mitigations. Um, if, the, if the image is compliant, then we do a couple of things. First of all, we sign both the image and the SBOM using uh, a tool from SIGSTOR called Cosign. The reason we do this is that so in the future, if we want to verify that that image and SBOM have not been tampered with since we did the evaluation, we can now do so. And then the second thing that we do is um, create a compliance attestation. And the reason for this is that in a future phase, we will be able to use an admission controller like Kyverno or gatekeeper to be able to ensure that only images that have this attestation can be uh, deployed into our Kubernetes clusters. And then the final step, which I feel kind of, mi uh, sort of comes in very conveniently with the uh, VEX uh, talk earlier, is to maintain an inventory of all of the dependencies that you're using in your environment. And this is to answer those two questions when a new significant CVE comes along. Am I affected by this CVE? Um, what, what dependencies are affected in my organization? And where are those dependencies used in my environment? So hopefully at the end, this is basically the end of my talk. So uh, hopefully you've now got enough information to be able to appreciate how you can apply a lot of the tooling and the uh, specifications and the concepts that you've been uh, talked about today in your own organizations. So thank you very much. And if you've got further questions about supply chain security, either visit the jetstack.io website because there's now a new toolkit that we've launched just today, or myself and Chris are at the Jetstack booth for the rest of this conference. Thank you for your time. Thank you.